So Freddy Krueger is probably the one person that you do not want to play tag with, but this is a Freddy Krueger tag. Hit the button. Let's get started. <laughs> Hey there, hi there, ho there, Andrew here, the horror host of Generations X, Y, and Z, and yes, I am utilizing this as much as I can. Boogie, 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 boogie! Uh, this is the Freddy Krueger tag, and uh, this is created by Sean Urshan. If you have no idea who Sean Urshan is, don't worry, I'm going to put a link down in the description. You can go ahead and see his channel. It, uh, the channel right now, is the name is Sean Urshan, but he has a section called Horror Corner, where he does some tags, and he's created some pretty cool tag videos. This is one that I wanted to do. It's a Freddy Krueger tag. It makes sense. I'm doing a Nightmare on Elm Street uh, movies. Doing all of them. Uh, let me pause for self-promotion. You can go ahead and click the link above. That will go ahead and give you the playlist of all the uh, the, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies uh, that I'm doing. And um, yeah, uh, I'm not done with them all yet. Uh, but maybe by the time that you see this or see the playlist, I will have finished them all. Perfect. So... With that, before we begin, let me give a shout out to the patrons of the channel. If you enjoy the channel and you want to see me continue to make videos, then I ask you to please consider pledging and becoming a patron of the channel like these great people here. You can gain behind the scenes, access group video chats with me, earn merchandise like the Blitz Bolt shirt, and be part of the creative process voting on what is being created and the direction of the channel. But right now, let's get into the questions of this Freddy Krueger tag. And the first question is, what is your favorite dream sequence in the franchise? Well, my favorite uh, dream sequence would be the Philip sleepwalking scene that is in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors. I uh, I really just like how they played the reality with the dream on that. I thought they did a really good job. And it was really cool to see uh, Freddy using uh, you know the, the puppet string, so to speak, with the veins and, and everything that was... Uh, that was Philip's innards. It was pretty cool. I like that. Now, if you're going to talk about a dream sequence where... Freddy's not really seen in it. Uh, I will go with the original Nightmare on Elm Street where Nancy falls asleep in high school and she's got these visions of Tina in the body bag and everything. That was a pretty creepy scene and very iconic, mind you. Going into the next question, what is your favorite film in the franchise? Well, I can't say that yet because I haven't reviewed all the, uh, the films in the franchise. So, mm, spoilers. Can't give those spoilers out because... When I'm done reviewing all of them, I'm going to do a ranking video. And that's going to give you the answer there. So you have to, you know, stay tuned for that. Next question. Do you think Nightmare 2 should have followed the events of the first movie, or does it work as a standalone film? So the answer to that is yes and yes. Yes, I think that it works well as a sequel. Yes, I think it works well as a standalone film. It, um, it was the first sequel, so some people say it wasn't really canon, yeah, there was some things that wasn't canon from the first film, but really the sequels kind of break off a little bit. So I can't I can't fault that much. I I can say that I enjoyed Nightmare on Elm Street too, um, for maybe other reasons that other people uh, like or dislike. But uh, I will say this: like most fans, you create some type of fan fiction out there over things that you really enjoy, and I have created. A fan fiction story, uh, screenplay of Jesse teaming up with the Dream Warriors and bridging the second movie and the third movie uh, together. Uh, basically, I have it where it's a year after the second movie. Jesse was locked up for the murders. You know, there was a big court trial, all that other stuff. He was locked up for being a serial killer and having the M.O. of Freddy. However, while he is in prison, he is continually having these terrible dreams because Freddy is still taunting him in there. So he gets transferred to Weston Hills. Why? Because he has sleep disorders. And that is where he meets the Dream Warriors. And one by one, the Dream Warriors start to die. And there is some type of MO of Freddy Krueger. And the staff thinks that Jesse is killing them, especially uh, Dr. Sims. So when Nancy shows up uh, to, to help out, Nancy validates Jesse a little bit because they lived in the same house. And then Kristen goes ahead and pulls Jesse into the dream world when the rest of the kids are fighting Freddy. And then Freddy acknowledges Jesse as they are foes. And 
chaos ensues. I'm not going to go ahead and get the whole plot. This is a, a tag video. Anyways, not giving every, everything away for free. New line. Hire me. I'll make that movie for you. The next question is, what is your favorite kill in the franchise? Well, my favorite kill actually is Nancy's death, which is in A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, the Dream Warriors uh, sequel. It is when Freddy pretends to be Donald Thompson. And I got to be honest, this is one of the few times as a audience, uh, when I, the first time I saw it, I was caught off guard. I didn't see it coming because it was so schlocky. The typical, you know, fading in from the heavens with the, the yellow glow and him, you know, I've, I've crossed over, princess. That stuff is written poorly, might I add, in a lot of uh, films. So I just took it like, oh boy, okay, all right, Thompson's... Donald Thompson's dead, and, and oh, man, he just stabbed her in the gut. And uh, it, it was like poking a jelly donut. It was gross, but it was good. And I really liked that scene. Um, caught me off guard. It was the, what it would be what Freddy would do. Freddy would utilize the weakness of Nancy pretending to be the dad and saying, I died, and then her letting her defenses down. It was great. I loved it. Though I will say that the uh, the Philip suicide sleepwalking thing is a pretty cool scene too. And the next question is, is Freddy vs. Jason better as a Nightmare on Elm Street film or a Friday the 13th film? No doubt whatsoever it is a Friday the 13th film. It is not better as a Friday the 13th film or better as a Nightmare on Elm Street film. It is a Friday the 13th film. I just consider it that Freddy is the guest star. There is no doubt whatsoever that he is the main antagonist here. He is the, the person that puts everything into play. He is the catalyst of the film. That is not a doubt whatsoever. But Jason is the anti-hero. And why is that? Because Freddy is manipulating Jason. So therefore, the screenplay makes Jason more sympathetic, even though he is as terrible and mean just ooh, just the whole bed breaking that guy in half that was just a scene that I kind of cringed it was it was good um typical uh Jason fashion he kills more people than Freddy uh in this film uh, like he kills more people in his franchise versus Freddy uh in his franchise long and short it is a Friday the 13th film. Which leads us to the next question. Who is your favorite final girl in the franchise? This is an answer that will blow you away because I'm certain that most people didn't even consider this answer to be an answer. Most people either went, oh, it's going to be Nancy or it's going to be Kristen or it's going to be Alice. Those are probably the top ones. Not my answer. My answer is Lisa Weber from A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Now, some people might be like, oh, she's not a finer girl. She's not She's not a protagonist. And to that, I say books. Because that's actually a PG-rated word, I guess. Um, I'll give you an example, and I'll defend this. Okay, Even though I have defended my thoughts, because I've said this in my Nightmare on Elm Street 2 review, let me pause for self-promotion. Go ahead and check that out. You will laugh! I still laugh. I made that a long time ago. That video just gets me every time I watch it. Anyways, uh, Lisa, in the movie, she is resourceful. She is trying to figure out how to defeat Freddy, and she's never even met him. She's never seen him or anything like that. But she does it because of the love of a character. She loves Jesse. Jesse loves her. That's a whole other story. But she is trying to defeat Freddy even though she never met Freddy, even though she doesn't really know that much about Freddy, she is researching all that other stuff. She's got the qualities of a final girl. She's resourceful. She's strong-willed. She's just a great character. Uh, she's, she's smart also. That's a, another thing. The survivor girls have the endurance. They have the smarts. They have the, the resourcefulness. They are great characters. And Lisa has that. I, I, I will say she's not one of the Elm Street children, so some people might not consider her a final girl. But yes, she's a final girl. She lives. Another question is, what would you like to see in the next installment of the franchise? What I would like to see in the next installment is a reboot. A proper reboot. A real reboot. One that makes Freddy completely despicable. And I don't mean just like in a 
Daffy Duck despicable way. I am talking about this man is a child molester, a child killer, a sexual deviant. And for all those people are like, oh no, he just killed the children. He didn't molest them. Get out of here with that, okay? That was the plan. The plan was that he is this very disturbing guy. And yeah, they sugarcoat it a little bit, okay? But you don't believe that he's some kind of sexual deviant. You go back and look at the entire franchise and see how many times... Robert England pelvis thrust himself out, you know, swagging out to the side and hip out, thrust it out and all that stuff. And all the little tongue blah, 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 flicks that he does. He does a lot of them. I mean, a lot of them. You going to tell me that he's not some kind of sexual deviant? Of course he is. So it would be great to see him in some kind of position of power over a child, a child actor, not a 30-something year old playing a teenager, okay, but a child. A child actor, you know, a good child actor, which is very hard to come by, okay, but just have them terrified and, and crying. That's all you really need, okay? And have him, like, looming over this kid, okay, as he's about to torture him and everything. That's all you need to do. It is, it's scary, okay? And they did a decent job in the uh, the, the beginning parts of Freddy vs. Jason. They kind of, like, alluded to that. That was the closest I'm saying go a little bit even further on that, okay? All right? You know, have some evidence of things that have happened in the past or whatever, but but not show it everything. You got to let the audience kind of put things together because our imaginations are whacked out as is, and that would give no redeeming value to Freddy at all, whatsoever. We would hate him, and we should hate him. Okay, and with that, when he is finally beaten, and we see how weak of a man he really is, and he's just beaten, and and he's you know killed or whatever uh, at the end of the movie, it is so much more fitting and validating, and just a better experience for the audience. But I will say this. You can't kill him, obviously, because you're going to make a sequel. So the whole thing, like in the original uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, where he hops on top of Marge uh, Thompson uh, while she's asleep, have him die there. Don't have him go sucked into the bed, whatever that thing was. That was just weird, okay? And and I, I, I've said before, I think that that was still part of a dream sequence. Have him physically fall on top of uh, Marge, all right, and die. He, that could be his final thing. He just dies and falls on top. Okay. She's asleep. She dies in her sleep, being burned to death. Freddy dies laying on top of Marge. But his essence goes into the dream world as he falls on top of Marge. Okay. Just like when you grab a hold of Freddy and you wake up and you pull him out, he goes back in. Everybody thinks that he's dead. All is right with the world. The movie ends with a happy ending. But... There's an opening for a sequel. Why am I not writing these type of movies? No line. Get with me here, all right? I'll work cheap. And the final question is not really a question. It's reenact your favorite line from the franchise. Okay, for people that know me and have watched some of the tag videos before that say reenact stuff, I don't really reenact. I'm, I, I don't do that, okay? I, that's just, it's not my bag, baby. Uh, but I will say the line... Welcome to my world. That that line that is used by Freddy in um, the Freddy vs. Jason is a great line. Though, I will say when Laurie says it back to him at the end of uh, Freddy vs. Jason, it's delivered much better. But that would probably be my favorite uh, line from the franchise, even though Freddy vs. Jason is a Friday the 13th movie. So uh, I, I will say, if, if you really need me to reenact a line, or actually have me say a, a line, um, there is no Jesse. I'm Jesse now. That line just blows my mind every time. Because I'm like, somebody wrote that, and somebody acted it out, and somebody was like, yeah, that made sense. It doesn't. There is no Jesse. I'm Jesse now. Means there's a Jesse. So... Yeah, that's probably my favorite Freddy line uh, from A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 because it is so ridiculous, I absolutely love it whatsoever. And with that, as always, I am late to the tag party 
meaning the majority of YouTubers have already used this tag and have already done it, so I'm not going to go ahead and tag anybody else in this. Um, if you want to do this video, feel free to do it. It's not really the one that I created. It's not uh, my property, but I am giving my blessing. Go ahead and do it. This is a great tag. Just go ahead and make sure that you give uh, the original uh, uh, writer, creator of this tag, Sean, the proper uh, you know, kudos to it and tag his channel in on your description uh, so people know where it came from. And uh, with that, I'm going to leave all the questions down in the comment section below as well. So you can go ahead and copy it and do one uh, for yourself. And also, I want to know what your answers are. If you're not doing the video, you don't have to do the video. Just go ahead, look at the questions that I've, I put in the comment section. I will pin it so it will be up at the top. And then go ahead, create your own comment. Give me your answers on there. I would love to know what it is. Maybe we can start a discussion uh, with that. And as always... Thank you very much for all your likes, your comments, your shares. And if you've subscribed, thank you very much. If you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell icon so you get notified the moment that I upload. And I will see you in the next video.